guys, May Foam here. And to get started here, what I've got here is just a little wood block. And first, using some texture paste and a stencil. What I did was put my stencil down and put the paste on. But as you can see, this big flower is not complete. Well, I just flipped the stencil over to be able to get the other side, which is how you see the one cohesive design. Super quick and easy. Let that dry for a few minutes, hit it with the heat tool for a few minutes, and then took a little bit of gesso and just ran a thin coat over the whole entire surface. And it's just about dry now. I see a few wet spots, but I'm really not gonna worry about those. So, the next step here in getting this canvas going would be to pick some colors. I'm going with spray. I'm going with Distress Spray Stains. You could go with whatever you like. There's really not gonna be any hard and fast uh, rules here. I'm going to kinda try to get a number of different colors going on here. Um, I'm gonna go pink for the center flower here. A little more on some colors, maybe a little less on some colors. Um, basically just kind of play around here. Let's see, here's some peacock feathers. That might be kind of pretty there. Okay, and I'm going to leave it alone. Right here where it is, I'm going to leave it alone. Just going to add, love these distress stains because look, if I just add a few squirts of water, I've got my whole entire canvas surface colored and set and just needs to dry in what? Under a minute, okay? And I've got paper towels down here because I just find for me, that's the best way to just soak up all that color. And this, again, next step, let this totally dry. Once totally dry, I'm gonna squirt this with a little bit of Perfect Pearls Mist in Copper. Uh, the reason I'm going for this one is it's going to add just a little metallic sparkle, but it's not gonna co cover my colors. It's not gonna do anything to my colors that's going to make it, um, it's going to change it, that's going to cover up. It'll just add a great little sparkle in the right light. Next up, I'm going to jump in here with one of my Tim Holtz stamps and a little archival ink. This is one of the new script stamps, really liking it. And I am very lightly, because I don't want it to go in and like really get down in the lowered areas. I really just want to stamp this over the raised areas. Okay, so I'm just going to press not too hard, just nice even pressure. And I'm not even going to re-ink it every time. I'm going to kind of go here and there. And that's going to bring just kind of a, just a very small amount of color and pattern there. And I'm also going to take that archival ink and brush it directly over the edges. Not worried about my ink pad at all because everything has totally been dried completely. I can also rub it directly over here and get a darkened effect over the raised areas, which is something I like to do because I love that bit of contrast. And even rubbing it just slightly all over the raised area, you're still going to see the text where the text is stamped. And again, just hit this with the heat tool, let that all set up. That seems to be the longest part of this process is just letting things dry. Now, once this is done, we've got a couple different directions to go. What I am gonna do and where my inspiration for this piece is coming from is I am going to take, and now I just have to unvary it here. Uh, I am going to take a cameo. I'm gonna use a cameo here. I am also going to come up with some trim to put across the top. It'll cover up this area right up here, put my cameo down, and layer some little bits and pieces down the side. Okay, kind of make like a rosette and have things trailing down here. But you can see how quick and easy this background was with just some texture paste and little gesso some distress spray stains, and of course my metallic touch as well as my archival ink. I hope you've enjoyed this background video for the full project and supply list. Be sure to check out my blog. I will see you next time.